Welcome brothers and sisters. In this experiment, we're gonna talk all about gold, but I don't wanna go over gold kind of the same approach that uh, there's plenty of information out there on inquartation, um, dissolving with nitric, and then dissolving your gold with aqua regia. I wanna talk about a few different things, kind of about um, how to on how to kind of get good at the process. And the first thing you'll need to think about is that fear that we all have when we take $7,000 worth of money, or gold in this case, and dissolve it in acid and light it on fire. So I wanna show you what to do just in case you run into kind of the worst case scenario and how you can get yourself out of that problem real fast and right back to refining. So I'll probably make this a couple parts, but this first part we're gonna focus primarily on uh, what do we do if everything goes wrong? In the second part of the video, I'd like to discuss the different colors of precipitants we have back here from our gold refining. Now in this speaker, I started with, it was exactly 59.99 grams of 99.4% purity gold and I ran this through a process, uh, the standard process that I use, and I experimented a little bit along the way to kind of generate uh, these beakers back here. This is more of my long-term storage beaker, and you'll see there's a more uh, dark precipitant on, kind of looks like the perimeter, and this has been shaken a little bit, so it's settled out a little bit different. But you can also see here where there's an even lighter uh, precipitant, and it is mainly all gold in all of these solutions, but there could be some platinum group metals in there as well. So we want to test for that. So let's get started with kind of the worst case scenario. What would happen if we encoded our gold, but we didn't add enough other metal? So instead of making six carat, uh, which is what you'd want your encoded gold to be below six carats, if it's 24 carat, you're gonna add the proper amount, and I'll put that on the screen here, um, of other metal. In this case, I used primarily silver to encourt my gold, um, but you wanna get it below six, uh, six K, six carats. Um, if you don't add enough metal, what happens is the nitric acid and the hydrochloric aqua regia solution will not react with that metal that you're putting in solution. And here's what we would do to fix that problem. So what we wanna do with this material is smelt it. We're gonna use the same flux recipe, 50% borax and 50% soda ash to smelt this material back into a metal prill. The combination of borax and soda ash do two things. Borax is basically there to create a molten environment to stop oxygen from penetrating the substance that you're lighting on fire. The soda ash makes the, that borax solution, kind of the swimming pool that the metal is melting in, very basic, meaning a very high pH environment. The soda ash is the reagent that causes this metal to, instead of popping and cracking in the melt dish if you didn't use a flux, and the borax helps to increase the volume of solution to help keep that penetrative layer so oxygen doesn't reach the metal. All we're really doing is taking this material that we ran through acid, which the acids are very low on the pH scale, one, two, and three. Now we're gonna melt it inside of a solution that has a pH of higher than 12 or 13, plus we're adding the element of very high heat. What that process does is pulls out the impurities. We're going from a very low pH to a very high pH. That's where the reaction takes place inside of the melt dish. And all we really need to do is, um, I'm probably going to do like a half ounce in this melt. So we'll get about, I don't know, maybe 15 or 18 grams in there. And it's just based on the size of your melt dish. I'm 
Well, 19.25. 10 grams of borax. And to that, we'll add 10 grams of sodium carbonate, or soda ash. So I've set up my furnace in kind of a breezeway where the air filters down the hall and it'll carry off any of the volatiles or any of the smoke. The heavier metals will have a tendency to show up close to the dish. So we want to collect all of this material to keep a nice clean workspace and there is precious metal in all of this dust. Eventually I'll refine all of this kale wool and if you can see even underneath this piece I've just added a second piece Let's see if I can just pull this out because the bottom layer actually ended up pretty caked with metal and you can see I mean there's just quite a bit of metal but it's mainly borax but there's definitely some metal in there so the beauty about this kale wool is it kind of pulls off you could pull off a sheet you know it's similar to like cotton it'll kind of peel back in layers um, you know and I'll just do that at the end when I'm ready to recover this metal uh, that does get trapped inside of the kale wool we can put all of this in acid and and recover our precious metals So now here I'm going to explain kind of the finer points of this melt. The idea is to keep oxygen from getting to the metal while you have your torch on. And the torch is blowing air, or gas, over all of this material. We want to get the flux molten like a swimming pool with our metal underneath the top of that swimming pool for the first half of this smelt. And although it's hard to get it perfectly right, using low heat and slowly bringing up the heat is the first key. I usually keep my torch about two inches away, aimed at the center of the dish when I start the torch. and I want the heat as low as I can get it, but just keep a red flame. By doing this, it kind of draws the soda ash and the borax into the flame, into the heat. But eventually this will melt down and we'll want to use a graphite stir rod to kind of stir some more dry powder into the hottest part of the flame.
So at this point, it's hard to know exactly the ratio of gold to silver that's in this metal prill. So I recommend just adding equal parts of either copper, silver, or 925, and you will need to melt a second time and pour some shot. Now that shot can be dissolved in nitric acid. And when that process is complete, all of the gold will dissolve in aqua regia. And we're back to refining. So thank you very much for watching and may all your days be blessed.